Okay, so we're on to part five, and in this one, in this part, I just thought I'd go over how you can roll back migrations or delete migrations if you feel you've made a mistake or indeed that you just want to do that. Because it's something that will happen to you. Um, so I'm calling it migrations gone wrong, it's a bit dramatic, but you know, uh, that's kind of sum up what we're talking about. So in this section, we're actually going to create our task class uh, to complete our code first classes that we need to create. Um, we're going to create a migration to migrate it to our database, as I've showed you twice previously now. Um, and then I'm going to show you about deleting, overwriting and rolling back migrations because I'm going to make a deliberate mistake here and hopefully you'll spot what that mistake is as to why I need to um, talk to you about this. And I thought I'd cover that because it's something that happened to me and it's something that will happen to you so you need to know how to do it. So the first thing we're going to do uh, on our journey is we're going to create our new task class. I will flash up on screen the, ta the class model. So new class, and we'll call it task. Okay, and as you can see, hopefully on screen when I edit it in the final edit, there are five attributes to that. Um, public int id get set. So that should be very familiar to you. Convention over configuration, that's gonna be our primary key with all the stuff that goes with that. Next one should be very familiar to you as well. Exactly the same, in fact, as our status class. It's just the name of the task that we're going to add. So do the dishes, polish the car, hoover the carpets, whatever. And then, not the final one, but the final one that really, in terms of attributes, we're going to add to the data bill. There's actually four attributes really we'll be adding. Um, the third one, shall we say then, is the due date and time. Now the reason I've just uh, put a question mark there is so that we can uh, have a nullable value there. We don't need to actually supply a date time. You may, you may want to leave that off, of course, if that's not um, to your liking, but I just decided to make that null. Um, I actually hate working with date and time data values. They always get me quite... Um, always get me, always get me. So the other two attributes, the next one um, is basically our uh, primary key, sorry, our foreign key to our status table. So this is going to basically create our relationship between the two classes and this will appear in our database table. So again, conventional work configuration, it will be an int and it's, this, is the, this naming convention is conven, uh, convention over configuration, so we actually give it the name of the class that we're linking to, if I can spell it correctly, and then capital I, small d. And that's basically saying this is a foreign key for the status uh, class. So it's pretty cool, it does all this heavy lifting for us if you follow those naming conventions. Now, the fifth attribute is something called a navigation property. And all that is, is basically just a, a reference to the status class itself. Now the difference between um, the primary key and this navigation class is a bit confusing to be honest with you. Um, so I'm not going to labour it here because I'll probably end up confusing myself if I go into it. And I'll more than likely end up confusing you, but what I have done is on the blog I have talked about navigation properties and foreign keys and I go into a bit more about them and the difference and then I've linked to a MSDN article on exactly the same thing and it's very lengthy and it goes into a lot of detail as to what they are and, and when you would use them. In short though, this will allow us uh, to use object-oriented notation when we are referencing our task's status. So if we create a task instance uh, object and then we want to drill down and reference its uh, status, we can do that using sort of standard chained object oriented notation. That's what the navigation property basically allows us to do. This does not appear in our database table. So let's just do a build, make sure that all looked good. Great, we want to add it to our database now. So what do we do? We add a migration. Let's clear that. So add migration. Oh. And we'll give it a name similar to the previous one, add uh, status, add task to db. Great, we're ready to go. Nothing could possibly go wrong here, so let's hit enter. Great, 
migrations created, we look in our migrations folder, yep, there it is. Oh my goodness, what looks wrong with that? There's nothing in here. Why is that? Reason, quite simply, drum roll please, is that we didn't add it to our DB or TMDB context class. It's not, that class is not under entity framework control. Entity framework does not think that we need to add that task class to our data model. Because in your real life coding, you're gonna be creating hundreds of classes potentially, and you don't want all of them being migrated to a database. You want to leave some of them out of scope. So again, this is the importance of the DB context class. So let's add it in. Again, we add it as a DB set, because that's basically a representation of a table. And we'll call it task, get, get, set. So the problem we now have, and this actually happened to me, and this is why I put it in the video, is that should all work now, but we don't want this empty migration. We don't want that floating around. So what do we do? Do we just delete it? Do we need to roll it back? Can we overwrite it? Well, in this instance, what I would advise you to do is go to pa uh, Package Manager Console and use the command get migrations. And that will actually tell you the migrations that have been run against the database and actually applied. So you'll see that that's not been applied. We've merely created it and we've made a mistake and we've realized that now. So all we need to simply do, delete it. Yes, we want to delete it. Cool. And then to apply or, or generate a new migration, we do uh, add migration. Actually, if I just uh, use my up key, we can do that again. And that will add it in here. Now, had I not deleted that last migration, I could run this again, but what I would do this time is I would use this force command, if I spell it correctly. And what that would do is, if that previous migration I hadn't deleted it, using this command, we would generate a new migration and effectively overwrite that, which is something we could do. I'll leave that key in there, that command, force command in there. It's not gonna do anything because we deleted it, but you can see now, it's created our new migration and it looks a lot better with our create and our, uh, with our sorry, with our up function and our down function or method. I won't go through all this in, in great detail. The only thing I will point out is this foreign key line here. It's because we've used conventional configuration it knows we need to create a foreign key to our status table, which is very, very cool. Um, and then all we need to do is um, update database. Great. And if we do get migrations one more time, you can see that we've had three migrations added to the database, which is wonderful. It's what we want. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about, I've talked about deleting a migration. I've talked about overwriting a migration. What about rolling back? So say we've, we've now actually applied that migration to our database. Now, say we went, oh, no, I don't want to do that. I want to roll that back. I want to get rid of that particular change, what you would do is you would run the update database command again. I'm not actually going to run it. And then you would use this target switch or target command, and then you would specify the name of the migration that you wanted to roll back to, and it will roll back to that one. So in this instance, we could roll it back to this one. And you only need to supply the actual name. You don't need, you only need to supply this bit here. You don't need to supply the timestamp, although that one is actually uh, quite long, um, as you can see there. So um, I'm just double checking that I've, uh, that's actually not target, it's target migration. I just have to check my notes there. So not target, target migration. So that actually makes more sense. So just to reiterate, update database, the command you would use is target migration, highlight it, and then the name of migration. And then if you ran that, this would run and it would update us back to the migration that was specified and it would run effectively the down uh, method of our, all, all the migrations that we want to roll back. Um, let's just go to our database and make sure it's still there or make sure it's not there. Or is there, sorry. Yep, tasks is there. Um, we can even create a database diagram, add those two to it just to show you that there's actually a relationship being created between them. Okay, 
So that was when migrations go wrong. So now you should be fully confident that if you make a mistake, you can either just delete the migration or roll it back. Let's go on to the next section. And in part six, we're going to be reading our status data into our combo box dropdown using our db context class.